Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Uh, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the Las Vegas to the Phoenix real estate market. Um, so we're gonna use the same data that we use. We have access to the Altos Research data for uh, the whole US. And although we're not experts in those markets, we're gonna compare uh, apples to apples numbers. So like list price, days on the market inventory, and the market action index, and then talk about differences uh, between the markets. Right. right, and similarities. <laughs> and similarities. Okay, so we're gonna start with median list price. Um, we'll put up the first chart here. So uh, on the top of all these charts, Vegas is on the top, and then on the bottom is, is Phoenix. So you see the mini median list price. You can see the trend here, how Vegas has kind of climbed up quite a bit on median list price. Um, now remember, this doesn't necessarily represent average home price, because if more homes sell that are more expensive, then the median goes up. It doesn't mean the market's in increasing. Uh, it just means the median uh, uh, value has gone up. So that's something to keep in mind. But when you look at this trend, you definitely see Vegas is on a little higher trajectory. And although Phoenix is on an upward trajectory, it's much flatter. Like their, their median price really for the last year has only increased by about 30 grand, mm -hmm. right? And they are they're a bigger they're kind of a bigger market too. So, but that's still like you can see the difference here. Like when you compare Las Vegas to Phoenix, Las Vegas has had substantial price increases, and Phoenix not really so much. Right. I mean, look, if you're in the Phoenix market, you you've been priced out, I mean, and we get it. We're we're not minimizing your your pain. We're yeah. simply saying, you know, that when we're looking at the median price, it's not quite as um, startling as as it is the difference between our median price a year ago versus today in, in Vegas versus the median price in Phoenix a year ago versus today. And keep in mind on these charts that bottom number is not zero. Mm -hmm. So if you were to zoom out on these, the, it, it looks like it's this, but it's really, if you look long term, it doesn't look as, uh, as ridiculous. Um, so this is the next chart. This is median days on market. Now on the top you have Vegas, bottom Phoenix. Now, when you first look at these, you're like, whoa, these are the exact same charts. <laughs> Actually, they're not. Uh, if you look at them closely, you'll see they're different. You'll see, wait, the, there are, I do see some differences now. They're very similar. Now, okay, so let's talk about the ups and downs and ups and downs. This is really over the last four years or so, and you can see what happens in certain parts of the year. There's inventory goes up and it declines, goes up and declines, which is pretty normal, right? It, usually we get these, in the, in the spring, we get uh, lower, less amount of homes on the market. In the fall, we have more homes on the market. And that's the, the that's in really in all markets, right? Right, so we actually have more more homes actually turn in the spring than, than they do in the fall, but the, t the, the days on the market are more in the fall than in the spring because more homes sell in the spring. Now, the reason uh, that we're really comparing Phoenix to Las Vegas is because they're sort of sister cities, right? Uh, they're both in the Sun Belt. They both attract similar people as far as they, re they attract retirees. They, re they attract uh, younger people. They attract people from California. Uh, they have similar types of homes, uh, similar builders, kind of similar price points, sort of. Uh, they experience the same sort of pain during the real estate market crash. So there are a lot of similarities between Las Vegas and Phoenix. So we thought it'd be useful to uh, to look at them kind of side by side where they are today. Yeah, and you know, Vegas of course is a entertainment city. Right. Um, if not for entertainment, Vegas wouldn't be comparable to Phoenix at all. No. Uh, and then of course Phoenix does have other industries. It has actual industries that right. Vegas doesn't have. Like it has a big aviation industry. Well, and, and it, it's it's getting a lot more manufacturing. Um, Phoenix actually has made a, a concerted effort to attract all kinds of businesses, including a car company and that sort of thing. So uh, Phoenix is definitely growing and, the, and their wages are growing, and that's a good thing. Um, the next slide we're gonna talk about is inventory. Mm -hmm. Now this these look very similar, but you can see they're different. Top is Vegas, bottom is Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And inventory is, is, is pretty low. Now this is just for single family homes. Um, you can see down there in the Phoenix area, it's in the like 1,200 homes. In Vegas, it's like eight something. Um, and this is a snapshot. I, I snapshot of these as of today. And this may look different than what you saw, you know, three weeks ago. And we'll do a full update of the Vegas market. We'll go into more detail here in about a week when right. the, when 
when April ends and we go into May. But um, so the, they, they follow, the inventory follows, matches, mm -hmm. as it does in many cities. But like Juana said, these are sister cities, right? Right. But the thing to keep in mind is that Phoenix has a far greater population. Phoenix is more than twice the size and population that Las Vegas is. So that's really um, something to kind of keep in mind as you're looking at these numbers. Okay. The next we're going to go, we're going to look at market segments. We're going to compare um, uh, on this graph or in this chart here, uh, Vegas is on top, Phoenix on the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll start on the, now these, these are the quarters. So the bottom numbers are the quarter, bottom quarter of homes. Mm -hmm. And you can see the median price there for Vegas is 371. It's a little higher for, for Phoenix, three, 398. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is all the way over on the right, days on the market were the same, seven. So these are actually, these are pretty hot, right? Mm -hmm. Now we will, we, we, we're going to do another, now we're going to do these more often. We're going to compare Vegas to other cities. And we're going to do one um, where it's the days on the market mm -hmm. for the bottom quarter in this city is zero. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think you're, if you think you know what it is, comment in the thing, say, Hey, I think that zero city is and fill in the blank, mm -hmm. pick a city and put it there. But no kidding. There's a zero days on the market. And what this means is in that city's MLS, they probably have some kind of coming soon status. Mm -hmm before the, the ticker starts for days on the market and houses are selling before they actually hit the market. Right. And all it takes is if you have, you know, 200 homes sell and 101 of them sell in coming soon, the average, the median days on the market zero because mm -hmm. half the homes, more than half the homes sold before they technically hit the market. And this is a real thing. This is actual, like actual numbers. It's zero right. for the bottom quarter. So if you think, you know, put it in it, what city it is. I'll give you a hint. It's not Phoenix or Vegas because these are both seven. Okay, and then you look at that next uh, quarter. Vegas is four seven eight. Phoenix is five twenty four. You can see so Phoenix a little bit more expensive market, uh, and then the days on the market were fourteen for both. There, the next segment was of course Phoenix more about seven hundred thousand. Vegas is six forty. Mm -hmm. uh, Vegas or Phoenix does have a little bit of a more robust and built out um, like Scottsdale and that area where it's more nicer homes, mm -hmm. it right? Is. But remember that those populations were not included in the numbers that I just mentioned. Yeah, right. And then um, finally, you have the your top end market segment. Vegas is 1.2 million, and uh, Phoenix is almost 1.5, which mm -hmm. is 300 grand is quite a bit of, of difference. It is. It's a it's it's not those aren't California numbers. No. We're going to show you. We have some California ones we'll do that'll. It'll blow you away too. So that's more than twenty percent. So that, that's quite a bit. We're gonna hit all the important markets that you know people would likely compare Vegas mm -hmm. to, and all that. Okay, so we've shown you the data. Mm -hmm. Now, something that we that we do on all the videos, we start off with this thing called the market action index. It's that little round uh, thing with the needle, and it points and it tells you where the the market is. Right. Okay. Now, Vegas. I'm gonna just tell you up front is eighty. Right. Now it was, I think it was 79 when we did last month. Mm -hmm. So it's 80. So it's a little hotter market. Of course, 40 is like a normal market. Anything over like 50 is a seller's market. And, and um, but 80 is a pretty hot market. It goes right. to 100, right? So I want you to guess where you think Phoenix is. Now, remember, the numbers are pretty darn close, right? Mm -hmm. The markets look pretty similar. So where would you think that would make Phoenix with the same, you know, days on the market, the price is maybe a little higher, um, inventory about the same number. So like, where do you guys think it would be? And what most people would say is probably about the same, right? You would think. You would think it. You would think it, but it's not. It's not. So we're going to put up the last slide, the market action index. Okay. Las Vegas is 80. Phoenix. 99. Mm -hmm. Now, Juana, why would it be 99? I mean, the numbers look the same. Same number of homes on the market, same number of, you know, all that. Why, what would make it so much? Why is it a hotter market? Um, it's hotter in Phoenix. It's hotter in <laughs> Phoenix. Okay. A little bit. It's a couple degrees. It's always hotter there. Uh, more than a couple degrees in the summertime. <laughs> so what, you have two markets that both have, you know, a thousand houses on the market mm -hmm. that are available. Why is Phoenix 99 compared to 80. Right. So uh, because they've got, proportionally, they've got lower volume, 
okay. than, than, than we do. And all of that plays with the numbers and it also plays in with uh, how quickly offers are getting accepted okay. and, and, and all of this. The bottom line is if you are in Las Vegas and you're looking at Phoenix, all of a sudden, Las Vegas is not looking so bad, guys. If you're if you're a buyer, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, keep this in mind too. Mayor Phoenix is a much bigger market. Yes. So when you're in that market, trying to buy, and there's a thousand homes on the market, it's a huge difference between. Mm -hmm. And remember, this isn't linear. This isn't. Remember, this market action index takes into a bunch of, of factors. Mm -hmm. Factor that uh, Altos Research collects it has a it looks at a ton of things right. and basically a hundred is like the hottest market in the city now right. or in the US mm -hmm. and there there's a couple that we're gonna look at that are super high like this and there's mm -hmm. some that we're gonna look at they're gonna surprise you mm -hmm. that the numbers are not this hot but Phoenix is a much hotter market even though prices aren't skyrocketing it does look at that mm -hmm. but what it mainly looks at is when you see the days on the market pretty low and you have less inventory in a bigger city mm -hmm. we could take a similar city maybe albuquerque that probably is smaller than vegas and it could have the same numbers but its market action index might be 70. Mm -hmm. and that's probably one that we'll do we'll do out we'll do albuquerque but we're going to do a ton of them we're going to do austin miami san diego los angeles probably even boise we'll probably even do reno mm -hmm. since it's in the state we'll do san sure. francisco new york city dallas we'll hit a houston we'll hit a bunch of cities all the usual suspects um <laughs> And then we'll we'll kind of compare the markets so you can get a feel because something else that's important to, to understand about this is that um, when we talk about what's going on in the real estate market, mm -hmm. Juana and I in all our videos have talked about two specific things. One are we take just what's happening in Vegas mm -hmm. and Vegas is its own separate island that we understand. Mm -hmm. We've sold thousands of houses here. We've been doing this for a couple decades and we've been doing these market update videos since I think 2000 eight or nine. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, you can go back in the channel and look for a videos from like literally 13 years ago where we're up doing the real estate market update, okay? Yeah. And we do national numbers. Yes. Because the national numbers, we can sort of grab national data, but the na every little market can have its own little bubbly thing right. or, you know, there could be strong markets and weak markets, right? Right. <laughs> well, you know, we, we've talked about this before, real estate is hyper-local, so. Yeah. You know, it's it's always really interesting to compare different markets and, and get perspective because we we hear this all the time from people who um, say, well, the Vegas market is overbought and and all of this. But um, you know, we're looking at other markets like, well, okay, but when you're looking at other markets, Vegas <laughs> is all of a sudden looking a whole lot better than than other markets. Yeah, and remember when 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 the market kind of dump took a dump here, mm -hmm. the last downturn. Summerlin didn't do that bad. No. And, you know, parts of Henderson didn't do that bad. Mm -hmm. They went, they were down, but they didn't get crushed. Mm -hmm. The South got crushed. Mm -hmm. The East got crushed. The North and Northwest got crushed. Mm -hmm. The center of town got crushed. Mm -hmm. Okay, the older neighborhoods got crushed. But more areas where people were more affluent. Okay, they're upside down maybe or whatever, but they're like, oh, they still have a job. They still own their business. They're still making their payment. <clears throat> there weren't a lot of sales. There weren't a lot of speculations in those areas. You know, people weren't speculating in Summerlin like they were in the Northwest or in, you know, maybe Southern Highlands or Mountain's right. Edge or different well, parts of town. Right. And, and the other issue, of course, is that, you know, in Summerlin and, uh, and in Green Valley, you also had a lot of people who had a lot of... Uh, equity to begin with so when the market went down they they were kind of in this position where they were they still had either they still had equity or were on par with what they owed because they had put so much money into it one thing so, so there was a lot there was there were a lot of different dynamics than in other areas of the town where people had borrowed the maximum amount you could borrow to purchase these homes and that was what caused a lot of the problems. We just did a video on the amount of equity people have and that's a, the two noticeable because we're you know we look at the same numbers we're, we're just looking at numbers we're not giving really opinion on what we think is going to happen based on our you know random stuff we're looking at numbers and trying to interpret like how this you know what we think right and when we see prices doing following the cha same trajectory as they did maybe 15 years ago, 
but we see differences. Mm -hmm. We don't have crazy loan programs where you right. can just buy five houses at a new home subdivision and there's a hundred builders and you know hundred subdivisions under construction in Vegas with you know each one with you know 200 homes being built and there's mm -hmm. all these homes that are just they're building as fast as they can and you know 50,000 uh, workers moved here just to build homes right. and run it up. We don't have that now. So we don't have the, the building that was like crazy. We don't have the that low loan program where people could buy a bunch of houses with zero money down. Matter of fact, almost nobody's buying with no money down. Everyone's mm -hmm. putting at least 20% down. Everyone has equity we didn't have before. We're, right. All we're saying is we don't know what's gonna happen. We think interest rates going up are probably good because it right. will it will kill off some of the, you know, the low hanging people trying to get a loan that's not probably the greatest loan out there, you know, 100% loan. Uh, arms are not predominant in the market, but they're up a little bit. People are switching to arm products. Right. And the thing to keep in mind that as interest rates go up, that actually helps to um, slow down the volume as far as um, sellers demanding more for, for their homes, right? Putting their home on the market for 800,000 and then expecting to get 850 for it with multiple offers. That's gonna happen less and less because now people are getting pushed around by the, um, by the higher interest rates. So when sellers are getting a reality check regarding um, how desirable that their homes are, that helps to stabilize prices and uh, helps to slow down that trajectory like this for, for prices, which is a good thing. We want a stable market. Look, a market doing this or doing this, they're just as bad. A stable market is what's best for everyone. It's best for, for sellers because it gives them certainty. It's best for buyers because, again, it gives them certainty as far as what to expect. It's best for real estate agents because we turn more deals. Yeah, we make less um, <laughs> money when the market does this. I'm going to do a whole video on this. We're going to show a graph of the market going up and then the market going down. And mm -hmm. we're going to show actual, like actual numbers mm -hmm. of how this works. But this there's actually less transactions happening in a market like this because people, you, yeah, there's less transactions happening. Right. But the bottom line is that while inter higher interest rates are painful, uh, they are actually working to stabilize the market. Yeah. And um, uh, the other thing too to keep in mind is the last downturn, remember during when the, when the prices were declining, interest rates were going down too. Mm -hmm. And it didn't boost home buying. Mm -hmm. It didn't cha really change anything. So we're keeping an eye on that. We've, we, we did another video where we talked about what happened every time interest rates went up over 1.5% for over a two year period mm -hmm. and not one time did the, did the, was there a did the market drop right not once and you say well what about 2006 7 interest rates that wasn't one of the times mm -hmm. interest rates didn't go up one and a half percent interest rates were basically steady the whole time they were at about five or six percent the whole time they hadn't gone up they had been low and uh, gone up prior to that but the market kept going up and then actually what happened was uh, the rates started coming down and then the market started coming down. So there wasn't really a correlation to that. It was like it already, it already happened. The other thing too is that the Fed is looking at this. Mm -hmm. they, they're not just looking at core CPI, they're also looking at the housing market. So right. you know, they talked about you know, having some more big uh, jumps in the, um, uh, the federal funds rate. Mm -hmm. And of course that'll affect mortgage loans too. But, um, and, and that is one of their goals is to, um, you know, put, put a little bit of a, of, of a break on, on housing prices through the interest rates. Yeah. So um, anyway, we wanted to show you this and that the big thing was the difference between when you look at two markets like Vegas and Phoenix, mm -hmm. where the markets look to be very similar, they're the same market, the, the cities are different because Vegas is, you know, Vegas. Um, <laughs> But why is Phoenix a super hot market when the numbers are basically exactly the same? Because I could have I could have done this update and shown you the Phoenix numbers and said it was Vegas, and you wouldn't know the difference because <laughs> you watch our videos; they look the same. The, the markets look the same, and I'll show you other markets where they look substantially different. You'd be like, "Whoa, the, that that market's totally different, right?" So you have the you have the nation, and then you have cities, which are their own little economic you know pockets, mm -hmm. and then you have 
areas within the cities, like even within Las Vegas, where you have little areas that are that pop more than others, right. and 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 that we have like separate zip code charts where you can see appreciation by zip code and how many sales in each zip mm-hmm. code and all that. So, but we thought this was fun. We wanted right. to share this. We're gonna do a bunch of these comparing, in this case, Vegas to Phoenix. But we're gonna compare Vegas to like probably twenty markets wow. over the next couple months, and just give you an idea of what you know what's going on in the in those markets mm-hmm. from a just comparing it to Vegas. Right. Because we can we can look at prices, how long that stuff's staying on the market, inventory, and then that market action index is pretty cool. So we want to know: Is this something that's interesting to you? Do you want us to compare Vegas against you know twenty markets? Um, you know, give us give us some feedback and what other things interest you because we want to make sure that we're having a conversation with you and that we're providing content that is meaningful to you or at the very least interesting to you. So let us know. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, notification bell, leave us your comments, share it with your friends. Like the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.